Hello. Hey, everybody. Good to see everyone. Jinshin, welcome back. Thanks. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so social discussion, I had a question here, but full transparency, if you don't want to answer and you'd just rather talk about anything else, go for it. Um, the context here, uh, I thought this was interesting. My son's really grown to like the movie Aladdin right now, which is like, if you haven't seen it, it's about uh, this person who finds a magic lamp and there's a genie and they genie can grant three wishes and kind of the, the struggles that come with that. Um, so I thought it would be in interesting if you want to share. Um, if, you, if, it, if you found a magic lamp and had a, had a genie who would grant you three wishes, what would they be? Uh, no additional wishes um, being what, the only rule. Uh, for me, um, good health for everyone. I think especially right now, that would be number one. Um, Number two, um, like unlimited green energy, so like renewable clean energy for the whole world. Um, and then I think number three, I don't know, I, I don't have a third one, so I'll, I'll just stick to those two. <laughs> I, I, I can't really think of a third one, so, um, so yeah. Um, Remy, over to you. I'm gonna step away for just one second, but I'm still listening, so go, go feel free to go without me. Yeah, interesting question. Um... I'm surprised you didn't come up with a like one selfish uh, wish, um, like become the the ruler of the world or something like that. Um, no, just kidding. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's a really a good question. I um, that's not the the type of question that I usually uh, try to answer because uh, yeah, wishes. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, frankly, it's, uh, I, I, I never uh, thought about <laughs> this question. So <laughs> maybe, um, maybe just one, one wish. It could be selfish. It can be whichever, um, I, you know, yeah. just curious or talk about what you did this weekend. I, I, I figure I'd try um, something very, very different and see if it, see if it worked. And if not, that, no big deal. Yeah, um, no, one thing maybe um, would be, I don't know, um, being able to uh, play music as long as I can or something like that. Um, like, uh, yeah, being able to enjoy the, the things that I enjoy doing. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, frankly, I don't know, uh, yeah being able to like, yeah, I think being in, in good health is, is a good wish <laughs> in general. <laughs> so I, I would go with that and that would be my, uh, like my, uh, yeah, my, my take on it, like, um, stay in good health, but it's not, it's not on, like, it's, it's, a, it's not only a wish. It's also, a, like, uh, something that you need to work on. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Stay in shape, stay healthy, and uh, and live uh, as uh, healthy as possible, as long as possible. And yeah, that's it. And love your uh, loved ones, for sure. Yeah, really a bullshit answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I think this no, no. this question maybe not not a great question. So no, no, that's, that's fun. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> I'm curious what Mark uh, can think about. Yeah, I actually, I actually watched Aladdin recently. I watched both of them because um, we we recently got the Disney subscription, um, so the animated one and the live action one. And I thought about this, so I do have an answer. And um, the so I like to travel quite a lot, but I kind of feel guilty about um, the emissions and the environment. So it would be a way to travel long distances quickly, but not through teleportation. So, <laughs> um, and not being able to fly. Because, well, I was thinking you miss a lot when you're flying. You don't see, um, 
the stuff that's on the ground and you'll just kind of fly over it at a quick speed. So I didn't want to give myself the ability to fly um, because I'd be, I'd probably use that ability to get somewhere really fast. So instead it's the ability to travel quickly over land <laughs> anywhere you want. So, so you'd still see everything on the ground um, in great detail, but you'd still be able to get where you want without using, um, you know, without the emissions that um, kind of long haul travel has. So that would be my answer. Um, but I, that's the only one I could, uh, I could really think of. So I've only got one wish. That's cool. All right, bank, bank the other two. Uh, we're saving for another day. <laughs> uh, Albert, uh, Albert, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I thought about this, and then I saw that the question has a closet. There's no additional wishes. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I thought of answering, like, ask, asking the genie to go back into the, was it the lamp? And then come back out and then give me another wish. But okay, no wish <laughs> wishes. So, um, I guess it would be like, um, yeah, I think it's being healthy in general. Um, that would be good. That gives me and also be like, um, like self sufficient. Um, so that then I can like use the time I have to, um, like do other things for other people, like, I don't know, for your family, for people around me, I guess, yeah. Basically, just have uh, the worldly things taken care of, and then I can do other things. Yeah, that's about it. Jenshin? Uh, I, wish, I wish this won't be too political, but I, I think <laughs> I, I want, I, I hope Taiwan can be someday be a normal country which be uh, which can be away from the threat on China. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So that was fun. Thank, thank you for playing along everyone. Um, and uh, I also had had a bullshit answer to Remy to your credit where mine were just like ah, this is blah blah blah. Uh, just like general things. So um, I'm th thanks everyone for sharing. Uh, I always you know I wanted to try something very different than what we had in the past, and it worked out okay. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, oh, over to announcements. Um, the one thing I wanted to call attention to is um, next week we're on pipeline triage rotation. Um, I think Mark is out on Monday, so my plan is to try and cover on Monday as well um, when I'm when I'm able to hop on. Uh, Mark's out because of a public holiday. Um, the other thing I wanted to just kind of point out is. If you're looking into something and you think it may help to record it, um, feel free to just like start a Zoom meeting, share your screen, and record. Um, and we can always we can always upload to Unfiltered or something like that as like a nice helper for people who are maybe learning the pipeline triage rotation. Um, if there's anything anything that's needed to help make sure you're effective in pipeline triage, um, please let me know and we can do our best. I'll do my best to get things lined up ahead of time. Um, next item is um, with 28.116, um, pipelines are now going to be using PG-10 uh, for MR's master nightly, and then uh, PG-9 will run on nightly and PG-11 will be used for master nightly. So we've kind of revamped what version of Postgres we're using uh, within our pipeline. Um, thanks for the good work on that, Remy. But um, just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking at failures, uh, is that we did just shift a little bit around um, what version of Postgres we're using. So if you're seeing anything that's database related, that may be re related to the call. Uh, the next item is related to review apps. Um, so I opened an async issue. I want to try, try this out as something new um, to see how we can have more frequent, like, discussions. I also think async discussions are generally a lot a lot higher quality than synchronous discussions because um, you put more thought into your answer. So I opened an issue on um, if we need review apps for GitLab FOSS anymore. Um, please review it and comment if you have 
if you have any thoughts or feedback, my goal is to turn that discussion issue into if we decide that we do not need it um, to kind of create a plan for getting, getting rid of it. Um, next item is related to the efficiency improvement doc. So if you're not aware of this and you haven't um, seen it, please review it. Uh, this is where our gitlab.com um, efficiency uh, item is being tracked as well as a number of other important efficiency um, improvements for GitLab. Um, these initiatives are all really important to help reduce our cost baseline for R&D, um, which is a little bit higher than our peers as we look to become a public company. That's some of the context behind why there's a larger mm -hmm. focus on efficiency right now. Um, and then last, that was a lot of announcements. All me, sorry. 12.9 uh, retrospective is this week. Um, it's actually later today. So um, there was, please review the doc, um, be familiar, like, and make yourself familiar with the things in there. Uh, I'll be representing the department in this one. So I'll be vocalizing all the ones for MEC. Um, the one thing that I observed is there was a lot of great accomplishments and ideas for improvement, um, specifically that started from our team. And I think we had a lot better participation in the async retro. So thank you all for kind of being good stewards of the, the retrospective process. Cool. Okay. That was a lot of me talking. So over to Albert for the agenda, where hopefully we can have some better discussion. Um, yeah, so the first one, um, it's about um, trying to cut down or reduce the number of jobs that we are running. Um, so I was wondering if, if, if we have ever considered doing like something like a test impact analysis where um, we did look at what has changed in the code um, or in the MR and then um, uh, determine what uh, needs to be, what test needs to be um, to be run to validate the changes. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll paste a link to an article that I read about this. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not, I, I don't, personally, I don't have an experience with this. I'm just trying to see if this is something that can be done. And also um, the examples that I've seen is usually done on a static language. Um, I'm, I wonder how effective it could be on uh, code bases like um, Ruby and Rails and with a lot of dynamic uh, parts to it. Yeah, uh, just want to know like what do other people think about this? Yeah, that, that looks interesting. I, I don't have any experience with that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, uh, I think that this, these kind of ideas uh, was suggested in the past, like basically run only the tests that are kind of related to a change. But it seems that, yeah, like the impact uh, analysis is based, is actually based on where the code is used rather than just what files were changed, which is yep. uh, smarter. So yeah, um, I mean, I think that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, we should look into what that in, in, entails um, if we want to implement that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can like, follow up with the more discussion next week once. Uh, so if anyone is interested, can read out more about it and get, like, form some thoughts and then we can revisit this next week. Yeah, I, I feel like there's an issue out there for kind of the, the general thing that Remy was just talking about um, that I, I can take the ownership to try and find and we could just use the issue to continue some discussion async and revisit it next week if, if we want after um, people are familiar with it. Because um, yeah. yeah, this was suggested in the group call as well as uh, a GitLab feature. So if you um, didn't catch the group call recording last week or didn't catch it live, this was something that Sid was saying, like, we should be working tor towards from a product perspective because everyone is going to have these, these similar challenges. So having a feature like this built into the product um, can add a lot of value to all of our customers. Mm -hmm. um, so. I've also done this at my last um, at my last job. I was a part of a, a group that did this. Um, we were doing microservices, and, and I'll say that this was uh, a spring, so like Java, 
app where the the complexity of analyzing like what is impacted from a change is very different than a Rails app that is is a monolith, right? Um, so different kind of challenge, but um, the approach that we took was run the like impacted test suite and the full test suite for about 60 days to see where they differed in what passed and failed, and then start to look at what are acceptable failures that we'd want to um, accept if it merged into our main line. Um, they were doing like a merge into a develop branch and then develop the master kind of workflow. Um, but there, there was more frequent red, the equivalent of red masters where everyone would swarm a pipeline failure that didn't happen within the MR, but did happen once the MR was merged and the full test suite was ran. So one of the other things to consider with this, but um, yeah, thank you for bringing this up. Any more discussion on that? Okay. Okay. Um, I'll find the issue and mention the team for async discussion um, and try to summarize the discussion we had here. Thank you. Um, the next item was more related to our SciSense organization. Um, I, it feels like the engineering productivity sandbox is getting a little large um, and we already have sections that are tied to context. I was wondering what if the team feels um, is there, should we try and simplify this by either moving sections to a different dashboard or something else? Mm -hmm. um, and how, how, would, how do you see the engineering productivity sandbox being used? It's almost like, I think the analogy I used with someone else is maybe charts start here and then graduate to another um, to another dashboard um, once we kind of are able to do that. But then what we're looking at as a team is fragmented a little bit more than what it is. So that's kind of the trade-off that we're weighing here. Open it up for discussion. So on a related note, I, um, I improved the uh, pipelines dashboard uh, this morning. Just like just before the call, actually, um, and I've grouped uh, the current charts into uh, three sections for now. And there's the master health, uh, merge request health, and uh, shared runner usage. And um, yeah, so I've tried to, uh, and I used uh, I used the number overlay for uh, all the charts to have like current uh, yeah. um, current state for each uh, metric and I think uh, I think the sandbox uh, is good to like create new charts when we need it and then I agree that once we actually use and look regularly at a chart we should move it to another dashboard mm. where um, like the yeah where the, the chart is uh like um grouped or placed in a meaningful section i would say um and also regarding the um, the fragmentation um in science there's this uh, idea of topics and mm. there's i think i created the quality topic in the past and in topics you can put dashboards so um, that's a good way to group dashboards. That's a good point. Okay. Um, uh, topics are they're applied at the dashboard level, right? Not the. Um, yeah. So okay. I've I've added the link now. Um, so I, I know we have like our general pipeline dashboard now in the engineering productivity sandbox, we have a lot of um, pipeline um, like job duration numbers and yeah. jobs, jobs, I think mm -hmm. job success rate as well. Mm -hmm. Should we keep, should we move those to either the pipeline dashboard or somewhere else or keep them on the 
engineering productivity sandbox? I think um, maybe we could like create a new dashboard for jobs specifically. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I think the pipeline dashboard is is good to have a pipeline view of things like during the, the the charts. Yeah, at the pipeline level, I would say. And then if you want to dig into jobs, uh, if you want to actually like, uh, yeah, look at into what jobs should be improved or is misbehaving or whatever, then we could create a new uh, jobs dashboard, I think. Okay. Would anyone object to me just um, creating an issue? This could be something that I can own, but my end goal would be to can like create dashboards that are tied to a specific context where there's, I don't know a better way to say this, but like um, a, not a large grouping of charts. So maybe this job dashboard would probably be the most amount of charts that we'd want on one dashboard. Um, mm -hmm. and that's not a firm rule, but just like a guideline. And then I'll add it to the handbook of here's all of our things. We'll group it by topic as well and get everything kind of wrapped up. Cause I think this is, um, this has been something I've wanted to do for a while, but I just haven't moved on it because I, I wasn't sure if this was um, something that only I felt or something that um, like a problem that was worth, worth looking into. So I'll look to do that today. To the context of this. Okay. Thank you for the for the work on the pipeline dashboard. I was just looking at that, and that looks really really great, Remy. Um, I know. I think when we started using SciSense, I think I had suggested like let's hold off on the number overlay because it can be confusing. But I think there it actually works really well to give just like at a glance this is what this metric value is. Um, so that looks those look great. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. Thank you for the discussion on that. Um, Remy, you want to take the last item here? Yeah. Um, so yeah, related to the PG10, PG11 change uh, announced uh, before. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, mm. I saw a merge request. Uh, I will add the link actually. Uh, yeah, I think you added request. it. Yeah, I put the issue. Um, but yeah, basically in Omnibus uh, with 12.10, uh, we will default to PG11 mm -hmm. uh, as an opt-out um, choice. Like people will, will be able to stay with uh, PG10 or PG9. Um, but by default, it will just upgrade to PG11. And then with GitLab 13, um, PG11 will become the mm -hmm. required version. The, so that means people uh, won't, I think, won't be able to upgrade uh, if then if they are not using uh, PG11. Um, and yeah, so um, at first I was thinking like we should, uh, test against particular version of PG based on usage data of our customers. But actually, I don't think that's um, useful because since the, with 13, with GitHub 13, the required version would be PG 11, mm. then that means I think that we, sh we should be able to just test PG 11 at this time. And the other PG version will still be tested for older versions, like in the stable branches and all of that, if there are mm -hmm. some backports. So I think that that should be, that should actually uh, like simplify things with GitLab 13 and we should be able to also cut a bit of cost uh, with that. Um, yeah, so just wanted to share that. I don't know if I'm missing something or if there's other point of view on that. 
you're not missing anything. Sorry for the for the background noise. You're not missing anything from what I'm I'm seeing. I I I just maybe I just overlooked this, but I guess I didn't realize that um, PG11 is up out in 12:10. I thought that was I thought it was just happening in um, 13. So that was yeah. that was my misunderstanding yeah. as well. Yeah, me too. Um, me too. But I, I think your your proposal is good on if we can test PG9 and PG10 for stable backports. Um, like stable branches, that would be good to look towards in 13. And then from a nightly master merge request um, for normal changes, we just focus on PG11. Uh, that'll re reduce our pipeline spend because we're not like running jobs on multiple permutations as well um, across our, our schedule, I'll say, more of our scheduled pipelines. Mm -hmm. um, I can create an issue specifically for this um, so that we just don't lose sight of it versus the one big tracking issue where it was like our plan over time or would yeah. you rather just track it with that, that issue? Yeah. Um, uh, so my, my plan for the, for this long-term plan was to actually like document it, like, you know, documentation, um, rather than, you know, an issue so that it's also uh, public and for, uh, everyone else, uh, it's documented. Um, Good idea. Yes, but we we will still need issues for making the actual changes to the pipelines, like not forgetting. So um, yeah, I think um, yeah, I think I will probably create create issues um, for the changes that we will plan, like one for uh, GitHub thirteen and and issues if yeah i don't know if we will, if we need yeah we shouldn't need uh any additional issues for now because the next yeah. change will be pg12 in 133 so yeah. we still have time yeah um, and yeah. yeah yeah um that sounds good thank you thank you for that if um if there's anything i can do to help there please let me know also, great catch. Um, I like I said, I had overlooked um, that yeah, PG11 sure. was really being opt out there. So thank you for seeing that and bringing it to the team's attention. Yeah, I also I was also thinking that uh, yeah, it was only it was only uh, switched on with 13, but yeah, actually it will uh, will default to it in already in 12.10. Um, but I think that's, still, I think that's still, um, yeah, w one last thing is, um, it still leaves the question of, of should we test PG11 by default instead of PG10 already? Because like just a few days ago, we switched to PG10 by default in merge request, I mean, uh, should mm -hmm. we, should we, uh, like switch PG10 and PG11? Like, um, now. PG, yeah, now, like, that's PG11 in merge request master and nightlies and PG10 in master and nightlies only. I think that would be like in sync with the omnibus change. Yeah. Yeah. Was PG10 the same, like, opt out last in 12.9 or was it similar to how PG11 is now or was it optional, like, completely optional where you could opt in to PG10? Um, do you know? Hmm. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's. Uh, yeah. I. I. Sh, I, sh, I would. I would need to look. The quick yeah. answer, I guess, my thought, if you like, a quick answer. Yeah. Like to me, it makes sense to just test PG11 if that's opt out. I don't mm -hmm. know how many people are going to be opting out of, like opting down to a lower Postgres version, unless they're, you know, depending on their environment, their run environment, and how they have their database configured. But as long as we're still testing, I would say maybe either master or nightly on PG10, I'd leave the decision mm -hmm. up, to, up to the team. Yeah. Um, that should be fine. Cool. OK. Cool. OK, so I will create issues uh, for that as well. OK. Um, I, I feel bad giving you the bad review, like the poor code reviews on PG10 and having that drag on just to find out we should be going to PG11 this week. 
So no, it's uh, yeah, it's no problem. Um, but I mean, now the change will be easy. We just have to switch uh, PG10 and PG11, basically. Yeah, um, we can always we can always ask distribution and see if they have a preference here too. Um, but my preference would be to just go with PG11 and switch the default. So okay. Um, Anything else that anyone would like to, to bring up? Awesome. Well, um, it was good, good seeing everyone. Thank you for the time. Um, and I hope everyone stays safe and I'll catch you, catch everyone uh, later in the week for async. Cool. See you everyone. Bye. 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 Take care.